I think it was uh, Dink that made the joke that football is now his side hustle uh, next to uh, TikTok. I'm worried about issues in the locker room, Jackson Mahomes and, you know, Brittany Matthews, you know, uh, going back and forth, uh, you know, with, uh, with Juju about, you know, who has more TikTok followers and all that, you know, who are, who's getting more views. Hello and welcome to episode 354 of the official Establish the run.com podcast. My name is Adam Levitan. I am one of the co-founders here at ETR, as always, joined by fellow co-founder Evan Silva. And a lot has gone on. I think, I mean, Evan was saying before the show, the craziest free agency period we can remember in the history of doing this. Evan, it's been a wild week. Good afternoon. Yeah, I started covering the NFL at Roto World uh, in... 2006 and I think this was by far the craziest wildest free agency signing period that I've ever witnessed from the massive trades you know the a, a quarterback carousel really across the league some some teams still don't even have like have a quarterback right now mm-hmm. the Colts don't have a quarterback I think atop their depth chart would be Sam Ellinger six round pick last year um, they've been connected to Baker Mayfield, Marcus Mariota a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, and the, the, the domino effect, of, of course, was we talked about in the last show, Aaron Rodgers with the biggest deal in the history of the NFL. But that just led to, you know, uh, I, I really I feel like that really kicked down the gates. And I mean, it, it was it was incredible from the Russell Wilson trade on down to Devontae Adams. And we're, we're going to get to a lot of it today. Yeah. And. and- I, the crazy thing for me isn't just the free agency, like the, the saga with Tom Brady. I mean, the saga with Deshaun Watson, that, that wasn't free agency stuff. The saga uh, with Russ Wilson. I mean, all, all this stuff, like quarterback movement has just been completely out of control this offseason, obviously, and have a huge, huge impact on fantasy, on betting markets, everything. On today's show, we are going to continue to discuss all the transactions that were taking place in free agency. This time, it is Sunday at around 5 p.m. Eastern. We are going to discuss the transactions that have taken place since we last recorded on Friday. Hopefully you guys checked out that show. A lot to chew on, certainly, between Friday and Sunday here. Before we get into it, I want to remind everyone of this absurd deal we have with the folks at BetMGM right now. I've talked a couple times about how the insane cutthroat battle between sportsbooks for customer acquisition is just a huge benefit to us, the betters. And an example of it is this deal. You use our link to sign up for BetMGM. You make a $10 bet. They send you a coupon for $85 off any ETR product. You can use that for up to a year. And on top of that, you get $1,000 in free bets. Head to the betting tab on the Sportsbook Bonus Offers page on establishedrun.com for the link and details. All right, Evan. I was going about my business on Friday night. Get the alert, that absolutely shocking alert that the Packers who everybody assumed Devontae Adams would come to his senses, play on the franchise tag, whatever they wanted to do after Aaron Rodgers came back. Turns out, no, no, Devontae Adams doesn't have any loyalty. Devontae Adams demanded a deal. He said he wasn't playing on the franchise tag. Allegedly, allegedly, the contract that he got from the Raiders, which we'll talk about for a second, wasn't even as big as the one that the Packers were prepared to offer him. He still said, I want to leave and go to the Raiders. So we had Devontae Adams to the Raiders for a first round pick, a second round pick, the Raiders turn around and give Devontae Adams a five-year, $141 million contract now. Maybe they can get out of it after three years and $67.5 million. It's still an absolutely massive, massive contract on top of the draft capital. What was your reaction, Evan, to the Devontae Adams trade Friday night? Well, we had heard, um, and it was reported specifically by James Jones of uh, the NFL Network. You know, He's a guy that has a good relationship with – a lot of ex-pack, uh, current and ex-Packers. And he was saying that after the Packers gave Devontae Adams the franchise tag, like Devontae Adams was pissed and pretty much went to the organization and said, no, I'm not playing for you anymore. Trade me. And uh, apparently Aaron Rodgers had been informed of that. He, you know, reached, reached a point where he was, you know, he, he understood, I guess, Devontae Adams' position. And, Devont- and they, they found a trade partner in Devontae Adams, uh, former uh, college quarterback at Fresno State, Derek Carr and the Raiders. So 
And it, it's, it's a massive investment. You know, Bill Barnwell of ESPN did a very thorough rundown of the entire trade, really from both sides. He concluded that he thought that the, the Raiders probably – it's probably not a great bet that they're making, which, of course, pissed off all the Raiders fans. But it's a very objective analysis, and I would encourage anybody – to read it from a real life football standpoint, from a fantasy standpoint, you know, I, I think it's going to be a, a fairly significant downgrade. What happened in green Bay was that, you know, he really had so little target competition and now he's going to go to the Raiders, Hunter Renfro, uh, Darren Waller, you know, Derek Carr has historically spread the ball around a lot more than Aaron Rodgers, who would just absolutely force it to Devonte Adams. And they had such incredible chemistry I think that they they can pick up on some of that chemistry that they developed at Fresno State but I mean they haven't played together since 2013 and you know it's just it's not going to be like it was with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay shower narrative going mainstream of course everybody talking about how Derek Carr and Devontae Adams played together at Fresno State I I mean look man Devontae Adams is an awesome awesome player I I am not in the habit of of giving up first and second round picks on $141 million to 29-year-old wide receivers, period. Now, if you thought, oh, I'm all in to win right now, that's a different story. But are you all in to win? I mean, in their division alone, they're so clearly the fourth best team to me. And the sports books in the market agrees. I mean, they're seven to one to win the AFC West. Chiefs, obviously way better. I think Chargers, way better. I think Broncos are significantly better so even with Devonte Adams you're still the worst team and you gave up all this capital still I, I like them you know trying and I think maybe we've been too hard on Derek Carr like I probably think Derek Carr is maybe a little better than Evan does and I think Derek Carr is fine he's still the fourth best quarterback clearly in that division agree with Evan that Devonte Adams takes a little hit but man I mean he's still so 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 good we do have the shower narrative I think he'll end up somewhere in like somewhere between wide receiver two and wide receiver five uh, for me at least we do have him behind Cooper Cup right now and kind of right there with Justin Jefferson at the top of the wide receiver ranks in our best ball rankings. Let's go to the Packers side, though. I mean, did Aaron Rodgers do this for money, Evan? Like, what was he thinking? Like, oh, I'll come back, and I won't have Devontae Adams. I mean, they have no one now for him to throw the football to. I guess Al Lazard, I think they're going to draft a wide receiver early, but you can never count on that with them. What do you think about Aaron Rodgers and the Packers now without Devontae Adams? I think it's a fairly significant downgrade for Aaron Rodgers. You know, Aaron Rodgers is the kind of quarterback that can elevate players around him. He can play at that truly elite level. But I think that Devontae Adams, just as much as Aaron Rodgers made Devontae Adams better, Devontae Adams made Aaron Rodgers better as well. So I I would expect um, some pretty serious regression in 2022 for Aaron Rodgers, but yeah, I mean, the, 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 the supporting cast now is going to be uh, very interesting to talk about. They did bring back Robert Tanyan. They put a second-round tender on Alan Lazard. They do have Randall Cobb coming back. Amari Rogers is going to be a very interesting conversation leading into the season. And, yeah, I would expect them, you know, to – I mean, they, they've got significant draft capital. Yeah. And I would expect them to use one, if not two, early picks – at wide receiver slash tight end. I mean, whoever the Packers take in the first round is going to end up being the best fantasy prospect, right? So if the Packers use their first draft pick on Drake London or Traylon Burks or, or Garrett Wilson or, or whoever they take, I mean, it could go all the way down to Jameson Williams or, or Sky Moore or, or whatever. They're going to end up, that guy's going to end up being the guy that fantasy players flock to. And we'll talk about more about yeah. that if and when it happens. And I would also note that Aaron, Aaron Jones is another player yeah that could be sort of like a sneaky beneficiary of uh, the Packers moving on from Devontae Adams. Aaron Jones splits without Devontae Adams on the field have been absolutely massive. All right, let's go to the other bombshell. We heard, everybody heard that Deshaun Watson was down to the Saints or the Falcons. He told the Panthers, no thanks. He was meeting with the Falcons. He met with the Saints. There was a lot of smoke around that. Out of left field comes Cleveland to give him five years, $230 million, and three first round picks to the Texans. I mean, wow. And, and obviously, like he is, has this cloud of the uh, off field stuff around him. You know, we're not here to comment on that, but that's around him too. And so, you know, it, it is just an absolutely eye popping deal for Deshaun Watson. What do you think from an on field perspective of Deshaun Watson getting this massive deal to go to the Cleveland Browns? Yeah, and the Browns even at one point had been informed that they were no longer part of it, and it was down to the Falcons and Saints 
But I, my guess is that the way that they structure this contract, which is massive, fully guaranteed, by far the biggest guarantee in the history of the NFL, like by far, far, mm-hmm. uh, $230 million. And then they stuck in there the, the first year base salary is $1 million. And so if Deshaun Watson is suspended, it sounds like they anticipate a suspension. Mike Garofolo of NFL Network said – that uh, on uh, their free agent uh, frenzy show this week that Deshaun Watson is probably going to open the season on suspension. So the NFL can't pull away. You know, if you, if you, if you're suspended, the NFL cannot fine you via uh, signing bonuses, only via game checks and actual fines coming from your base salary. So because they made this, the, the first year base salary, $1 million, Mm-hmm. You know, he gets an eight-game eight, eight game suspension. That's only going to cost him like 500K. I mean, the way that they structured this contract, I think, might have been the, the, um, you know, the, the reason that he wound up choosing Cleveland. And also the, um, uh, the uh, acquisition of Amari Cooper. I mean, the Browns clearly had a plan here. I mean, they had a strategy here. And I also think that uh, Amari Cooper gets a, a huge bump from what they were looking at uh, with Baker Mayfield or, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo was rumored to be going there. I mean, this is a a really big move for Amari Cooper. We are baking in some suspension risk in our ranking. You can, of course, see our rankings for free right now. Deshaun Watson we have as the QB 10. Of course, he'd be higher if he weren't baking in any suspension at all. I will say that when you're playing in these formats, you know, if you're playing best ball, you draft two or three quarterbacks. I mean, you can obviously get by without Deshaun Watson for the first three, four, five games. An incredible fantasy player when healthy. I also think from a weaponry perspective, Evan, you mentioned Amari Cooper. I'm seeing rumors that Will Fuller and Deshaun Watson could be reunited in Cleveland. That would be nice. I've seen rumors that they want Jarvis Landry back. So if you can get Amari Cooper, David Njoku, Will Fuller, Jarvis Landry, and the best running back room in the league, I mean, all of a sudden, you got a pretty good offense going right there for the Browns. Where does this leave Baker Mayfield? Baker Mayfield, does he go to the Colts? Uh, I've heard rumors to the Falcons. Uh, Baker has like, I mean, he hasn't played well enough. Number four, number one overall pick. He's had plenty of chances, you know, had a really good year. Um, was that two years ago, maybe three years ago. And has just been on steady decline since then. What do you think happens with Baker now? I don't know, but Seattle and Indianapolis to me seem like the likeliest destinations. Seattle has a ton of draft capital mm-hmm. after, uh, moving on from, uh, uh Russell Wilson, but I, I, I think that Baker's going to come pretty cheap. I, I've seen like a third and a fifth thrown around mm-hmm. uh, as the possible compensation that will go back to Cleveland. Seattle does seem like a, a situation, like a, a, from a team philosophy standpoint, that they'd be willing to take a chance on Baker Mayfield. They probably love like his, you know, competitive fire and, and all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, but I think Indianapolis would be the best fit for him, putting him in Frank Reich's system, um, behind a, you know, a sturdy offensive line. Uh, you know, I, I think that that would be his best possible uh, destination. Sure, and, and I think the Colts are also uh, – probably prefer Jimmy Garoppolo. We'll see if 49ers actually want to part with Jimmy Garoppolo, though, there. Oh, I know. I'm interrupting the video. Wah. But if you're enjoying this video and want to see more fantasy football and DFS content like it, please just take two seconds, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button. really does go a long way for us and we'd appreciate it. Thank you for watching. And now back to the show. We've talked a lot about the quarterbacks Allen Robinson has had in in his career. I mean, all the way going back to Penn State, Allen Robinson has struggled for quarterback play. Now he gets finally Matthew Stafford. Allen Robinson does a three-year, $46.5 million deal with the Rams in conjunction with that, which we'll talk about in a bit here. Robert Woods was dealt to the Titans for a six round pick. Of course, Odell Beckham is coming off of ACL tear, late season ACL tear. I think the Rams open up in three wide with Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup, and Van Jefferson. Certainly a very nice, attractive landing spot for Allen Robinson. He has struggled, though, man. Like Darnell Mooney outplayed him last year. What do you think about Allen Robinson's outlook with the Rams? Yeah, I think that his 2021 season is really difficult to judge. He was hurt a lot. He didn't want to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, and the quarterback play has been consistently poor. He was excellent the, the, the year before that. Um, so I think that um, I, I don't is I, I think I'm going to give him a pass. Um, 
and, and heading to the Rams, I mean, it's, I think it's a really good situation. I'm surprised that the Rams only got a sixth for Robert Woods. He is coming off an ACL tear. Um, and he's, uh, you know, he's, he's starting to get up there a little bit in age, but uh, I was surprised they only got a six for him. But uh, I, I think it's a good situation. You know, even if they bring back Odell Beckham, which I think that they want to do, he probably is going to open the season on reserve PUP. So it's going to be Cooper Cup inside and Allen Robinson outside with Matthew Stafford, who will absolutely pull the trigger on contested catch passes uh, for Allen Robinson. And, that, and that's where he has, has excelled throughout his career. I mean, if you're willing to give Allen Robinson a pass from last season, like Evan just said, he's willing to. I mean, Allen Robinson is a baller, man. I mean, God, you know. And, and, and with Odell coming off of the ACL, I don't think they have a ton of confidence in Van Jefferson. Obviously, Matthew Stafford, very, very, very good. I mean, it's a really good landing spot for Allen Robinson. We currently have him 77th overall. Underdog ADP is around 88th overall. So we're a little bit ahead of market. I'd be willing to take even higher chances on Allen Robinson. Speaking of wide receiver chances, I mean – Juju Smith-Schuster is not that far removed from like an 111 catch, 1400 yard season. That was 2018, right? He's 25 years old. Now he's going to arguably the best possible landing spot he could find in Kansas City. He compliments so well with Tyreek Hill. I don't want to get too, too excited about Juju. He missed all of last year with a shoulder injury, which obviously to me is better than a lower body injury. He was able to stay in shape, et cetera, et cetera. One year, 10.75 million prove it deal. For Juju Smith-Schuster, I'm kind of excited about this one. Evan, am I crazy? I mean, I know Juju's been unproductive for a few years now in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. There, there are definitely reasons to be skeptical. You know, the Chiefs tried to get him last year. You remember yeah. that? Yep. Um, and he wound up sticking in Pittsburgh. But, yeah, there are reasons to be skeptical. I mean, this dude's averaging eight and a half yards per catch over the last two seasons. Yeah. Uh, I think it was uh, Dink that made the joke that football is now his side hustle. <laughs> Uh, next to uh, TikTok, I'm worried about issues in the locker room. Jackson Mahomes and you know Brittany Matthews, you know, uh, going back and forth, uh, you know, with uh, with Juju about you know who has more TikTok followers and all that, you know, who are, who's getting more views. Um, but uh, no, I mean it's it's a great landing spot. You know, you you can't bang the landing spot at all. He's going to be a big slot receiver yeah. for them. It's just. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There, there are reasons for skepticism, and then there are reasons for optimism. I think at the end of the day, putting him in KC, we're going to be optimistic about him. Yeah, we have him uh, 80th overall in the rankings right now for Juju Smith-Schuster. I mean, yeah, the TikTok narrative is in play. Maybe, maybe it's a good thing. You know, maybe, maybe he bonds with Jackson Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes likes throwing to him. I do think in all seriousness that, like, Terry Kill over the top, Travis Kelsey may be threatening defenses deeper, although that's – uh, with the age model is declining, you know, it's a good spot for Juju to catch a lot, a lot, a lot of passes underneath. By the way, Byron Pringle did go to the Bears on a one-year $4 million deal. Let's go to what the Titans are doing. Titans have been making moves, man. Uh, Austin Hooper was released by the Browns. Titans scooped him up one day later. Titans cut Julio Jones. I mean, that was a disaster from the jump. They replaced Julio Jones by giving up a six-rounder for Robert Woods, as Evan said, coming off of the ACL tear. I think the Titans could also draft a wide receiver and suddenly like, you know, AJ Brown, Robert Woods, Austin Hooper, maybe a draft pick. You're getting Derrick Henry back healthy. Like, you know, you could start to see it a little bit for the Titans. What did you think about all the moves that the Titans are making? Yeah, they've pieced it back together uh, relatively uh, impressively. I mean, and we still have not seen the peak from AJ Brown. Yeah. You know, I mean, one of these years, man, he's, he's going to lead the league in receiving. I mean, that, that's the kind of ability that he has. Robert Woods is so – you know, so solid, you know, just a, a rock solid possession to intermediate receiver, but he's going to catch everything. He's going to block, which is big in their offense mm -hmm. for Derrick Henry. He's, he's not going to come off the field in Tennessee. Um, yeah. And, uh, and Austin Hooper's a, a fine, you know, he's an upgrade on Anthony Ferkser, you know, and that's the, the sort of role that he's going to play. He'll probably play uh, more than Anthony Ferkser did, but yeah, I mean, they, they've pieced it back together pretty nicely. Yeah. Uh, Robert Woods, one of the best, Blocking wide receivers, as Evan mentioned, in the entire NFL cannot be a bad thing for the big dog, Derrick mm -hmm. Henry. Let's go to some wide receiver deals that went down. Chris Godwin, shout out Penn State. Chris Godwin, one of my favorite players. Seems like, I mean, I don't know him, obviously, but seems like a legit, legit good dude does. Chris Godwin, despite the ACL tear, happy to see him get three years, $60 million to go back to 
the Bucks. I mean, they're trying to get the band back together somewhat. I am expecting Rob Gronkowski to resign at some point. I am expecting Leonard Fournette to resign at some point. They have Mike Evans. They added Russell Gage. You know, I, if Godwin's not ready for week one, they can go with something like Mike Evans, Gage, and Rashad Perriman to start. So, yeah, I mean, it, it looks good for the Bucks. I'm not sure there's a ton to say here, as expected. Chris Godwin, back to the Bucks. Anything for you on that, Evan? I would just say that it, it reflects that the Bucks and they know his medicals better than any, anybody else. And he tore his ACL and his MCL. Yeah. But the Bucks feel very confident in his recovery, that he's going to make a smooth recovery, and they know best. So um, I, I think it speaks positively to, to where he is in his rehab right now, um, what, three and a half months or, or so, or, or about four months removed from, from that double uh, ligament tear. Speaking of – NFC South wide receivers, DJ Moore. I mean, DJ Moore, I don't think people realize how DJ good DJ Moore is. Three straight 1,000-yard seasons before the age of 26 with Teddy Bridgewater, the corpse of Cam Newton, uh, Kyle Allen, Sam Darnold. Now, he has major QB problems again, but the Panthers know he's a baller. Three years, $61 million extension for DJ Moore. I don't know who's going to quarterback the Panthers at this point. Like, I've, I've heard some Gardner Minshew rumors, but DJ Moore, I think, is going to produce – regardless what do you think of the extension for dj yeah he's the kind of guy that teams should be you know betting on he's he's still really young um and he's still an ascending player but man you look at this the quarterbacks in this division this nfc south division the saints don't i mean they have Taysom hill at this point yeah. probably gonna just bring back Jameis. you know they whiffed on deshaun watson uh sam darnold in carolina and Matt Ryan in Atlanta for now, although there have been some rumors that he could go to Indianapolis and he's, you know, there's nothing around him and he's not the kind of player that you want to have at, at, especially at this stage of his career with so little around him. And then Tom Brady, I mean, they, they should just what the Bucks should just wipe the floor with this division. I think everybody expects that. Yeah. I mean, we have DJ Moore 32nd overall right now, right around Jalen Waddell, Keenan Allen, Deontay Johnson, those types. And we'll see what they do at quarterback. I think, you know, if they can do something at quarterback, I don't know what, but if they can figure out something at quarterback, people are going to be way more optimistic about DJ Moore. A kind of a underrated one, maybe real life people aren't that excited about it, but you know, I, I always like James Washington and, and it's preseason bias. You know, when James Washington first came into the league, he was tearing up the preseason and it just never clicked for him in the regular season his game doesn't fit well with Ben Roethlisberger but man he just like didn't even really get a chance that much to get on the field but this chance in Dallas for James Washington I mean my god Amari Cooper is gone Cedric Wilson is gone Michael Gallup suffered a week 17 ACL tear we know Dak Prescott's gonna ball and ball hard I I'm excited about James Washington to Dallas on a one-year deal what do you think about that one Yeah, uh, yeah, Ben, Ben and him just never seemed like they were on the same page. I remember James Washington coming out of Oklahoma State, and he was a prolific receiver there. He was a weird sort of guy in terms of measurables because he's like built like a running back. He's 5'11", 213 with four five four speed, and he was a vertical receiver at Oklahoma State. That's mainly what he's been uh, in the pros is a vertical receiver, but he's like you know, built like a, like a running back, you know, and without great speed. Mm -hmm. But, I, yeah, I, I like the landing spot in Dallas. Absolutely. I mean, he's going to go play with, you know, a top 10 quarterback in Dak Prescott uh, on a team that has been willing to be aggressive in the passing game. And he has a lot of opportunity in Dallas. No Amari Cooper, no Cedric Wilson. We want to keep C.D. Lamb in the slot. So I think that James Washington – uh, opposite Michael Gallup, that's, that'd be a good situation for him to, you know, produce some big games and be a, a quality late round fantasy pick. Yeah, I like it. And, and I, I, you know, we'll see if Dallas also drafts a wide receiver, but for now, I think James Washington set up really, really well. Let's go to some of these running back uh, moves. Obviously running back market is extremely, extremely depressed for a lot of reasons that we're not going to get into now, but I want to start with the Cordell Patterson thing. Cordell Patterson was like, breaking fantasy for the first I don't know eight weeks of the season and then they stopped using him as a pass catcher he is back to Atlanta now on a two-year ten and a half million dollar contract they have like not they have Kyle Pitts and Cordero Patterson and like that's basically it right now Cordero Patterson is 31 years old doesn't have a ton of tread on his tires because he was like you know just a gadget guy for so long but they were using him as like a feature back last year what do you think of CPAT back to Atlanta two years ten and a half million 
Well, I think that it's still probably the best, even though they, they took the, you know, the, the wind out of him uh, in, in, in terms of his usage in the passing game down the stretch last year, I still think it's the best possible landing spot for him because I just don't know if any other team would be willing to feed him touches like Arthur Smith was willing to do last year. Mm-hmm. And we do want to get that, you know, ideally get that, that passing game usage ramped up for him to be a, a big-time fantasy asset again. I don't know. That's going to be something, you know, that's going to be a tricky situation to, to try to analyze and predict. And we're probably going to have to, you know, live off some coach speak and, you know, try to find indications maybe in the preseason. I mean, it's, it's going to be a, a difficult situation to, um, to analyze, but I, but I think he's probably going to end up being like a, a middle round pick in fantasy and not like a fourth, fifth, sixth rounder, but like, like seven through nine, round seven through nine, somewhere in there, I think would make the most sense. Yeah, I mean, we're already low on on CPAT. I can tell, you know, we, we have him 118th uh, overall right now. And so I'm sure he'll go before that, Will, CPAT. But, you know, I mean, dude was uh, shoving it down our throat plenty of times in the early part of last season. This J.D. McKissick thing, man, we, we went on the podcast and, we, you know, we spent like five minutes or maybe more on the J.D. McKissick thing because it was so impactful. You know, it was such a big thing for Antonio Gibson. It was such a bad thing for Devin Singletary. J.D. McKissick changed his mind, goes back to Washington now on a two-year, $7 million deal. Obviously, horrific news for Antonio Gibson just kind of blocks him out of all that two-minute work, blocks him out of the third down work. I don't know what the Bills are going to do now because there was a time last year where the Bills were – I mean, Devin Singletary was playing like almost every snap and he's really valuable in that role. They clearly wanted an upgrade on pass down role though. I mean, they, Billy Bean or, or, uh, was uh, uh, upset that J.D. McKissick uh, backed out of this. So what do you think of this whole J.D. McKissick saga going back to Washington now? Yeah, I don't think that there's a whole lot to add. I don't think there's a whole lot of commentary here to add. You know, it's just uh, status quo in the Washington backfield. Very frustrating for Antonio Gibson. Mm -hmm. And I think Buffalo is going to keep searching. We know now that they are interested in adding like a passing game niche back, which, I mean, he would have been such a good fit in Washington. You know, J.D. or in Buffalo, you know, J.D. McKissick was an actual wide receiver in college. And he's been so good in that role. I don't know. Buffalo is, is still searching, though. Yeah, and I, you know, maybe they do something with Barkley. I, I kind of doubt that Brandon Bean wants to give up anything to pay seven point two million dollars for Saquon Barkley, but at least Saquon Barkley would be a one year rental. Speaking of the Bills, man, and I want to get back to the running backs in a second though. Six years, one hundred twenty million dollars for Von Miller to the Bills, and I don't want to spend a ton of time on defensive players, but the Bills are just going for it. Thirty two years old, give him. I'm sure this contract is fluffed up massively, but still, thirty two years old for Von Miller, six years, one hundred twenty million. Bills are going for it. They're going to be really, really really, really good team yet again. And, and they do this in the offseason after they use their first and second round picks on pass rushers last year. Yeah. So, you know, all of a sudden, I mean, they're, they're, they're cooking with some gas up front defensively. I, they, I, I, would you have them as the Super Bowl favorites right now? Oh, I think so. I thought they were the favorites last year. I mean, I thought they were the best team yeah. last year and, you know, just, just didn't work out in that wild game against the Chiefs. But, yeah. Um, also, the Bills added O.J. Howard, I should mention, on a one-year $3.5 million deal, a change of scenery opportunity there. Obviously, Dawson Knox is the starter. Uh, let's get back to the running backs. Rashad Penny. So, you know, obviously we know what the Seahawks want to do. They want to establish it. Like Rashad Penny and Chris Carson in the same backfield, like no problem. Even though I think they're kind of similar-ish type players. What do you think about Seattle's backfield now that we know Chris Carson likely to be healthy off the next surgery, I think. And then now they have Rashad Penny back as well. I was hoping that Rashad Penny would land in a situation where there would be just a, you know, a much clearer path toward him getting, you know, a, a lion's share of the workload. There's just a ton of dudes still mm-hmm. in the Seattle backfield. I think they're probably going to be bad on offense, especially if they're starting Drew Locke. So I don't know. I wish that Rashad Penny's agent had steered him somewhere else because I, I, I just, I don't think, and he, he ran so well over the last you know, yeah. month and a half of last year. I mean, he was awesome. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I wish he would gone somewhere else. Speaking of players that we like, Raheem Moster goes to the Dolphins, file, follows Mike McDaniel to the Dolphins one year, 3.125 million. It's starting to get crowded now in Miami's backfield. What do you think of Raheem Moster to the Dolphins? I just think that he's shown that he just cannot hold up in like a lead back workload sort of role. You know, he's always been like a good special teamer and he can add some, 
uh, electrifying playmaking ability as a runner, but just on a very limited workload. They're paying Chase Edmonds lead back money. Um, they've got a bunch of other guys there still. Yeah, uh, just not a great fantasy landing spot, I don't think, for Mostert. Yeah, and Miles Gaskin, I believe, is still there uh, as well. Um, small one, but notable for the handcuffers, Deontay Foreman to the Panthers, one year, $2 million. I mean, I thought Deontay Foreman played really well last year for the Titans when Derrick Henry was hurt. If, he, if Christian McCaffrey were to go down again, and at this point, you know, Christian McCaffrey is starting to pile up injuries, Deontay Foreman would, of course, be one of the premier handcuffs in the league any thoughts on Dante Foreman to the Panthers yeah you know he has he, if he uh, he looks like he's going to be the first success story of a, a play a running back that tore his Achilles mm-hmm. and came back you know and became and became like a, a productive player again yeah uh, but he of course tore his Achilles like in 2017 or something so it, it took him a really long time but you're right I mean he he did a great Derrick Henry impression last year, uh, you know, in Tennessee. And I think it was a, a, a fine signing by Carolina. Uh, we'll see in terms of the Achilles. We'll see about Cam Akers. He, he seemed like he came back a little bit too quickly. And he was, you know, just ineffective mm-hmm. uh, in the playoffs for the Rams. But, um, yeah, Deontay Foreman, solid signing. Uh, we don't normally talk too much about offensive line on these kind of shows, we'll talk to Brandon about it more as the summer goes on. Brandon Thorne, of course, covers trench play for us, but what the Bengals have done, and it was obvious to everybody, you know, like, I mean, they passed on offensive line help to take Jamar Chase last year, ended up being a win. Jamar Chase is an absolute baller. Now they say, hey, you know, let's really uh, protect Joe Burrow. Lyle Collins, three-year deal on Sunday. Ted Karras, three years, 18 million. Alex Kappa from the Bucks, four years, 40 million. I mean, they're completely overhauling the offensive line. I think much needed how much do you yeah. think this will help joe burrow i love it i love it you know and the bengals for years really hadn't taken the, the the offensive line seriously enough you know they they got ripped up and down for passing on, on penny sewell mm-hmm. for uh, in favor of jamar chase that wound up being you know a correct decision and but now they're circling back and i mean they're they're hitting it really hard joe burrow took more sacks than any quarterback in football last season. Now they're, they're, they also have some depth on the offensive line. I, I think you have to love what they're doing. And, you know, this team for so many years refused to use free agency as a path to roster building. You know, it seems like they, they Duke Tobin or, or who, whoever it is broke, you know, broke uh, Mike Brown and he's finally willing to spend on some guys. And they had an awesome free agency period last year. That's really how they rebuilt their defense now they're doing it on, on the offensive line. I, I love it. Yeah, I mean, you see these teams like the Chargers and the Bengals blasting in free agency, and they can do it because they have a rookie, uh, they have a quarterback on a rookie deal, a star quarterback on a rookie deal. Like almost nothing is more valuable from a salary cap team building perspective. A few tight end sightings I wanted to get to here before we get out of here. Tyler Conklin, three years, $21 million to the Jets. CJ Zoma is there also. I'm kind of more interested in this for Irv Smith than Tyler Conklin. Irv Smith, of course, mm-hmm. missed all of last year with that knee injury, but all they've added, I think, is Johnny Munt, who's like a blocker. So, I mean, I think they're counting Irv Smith to play a pretty sizable role in this Vikings offense. Kirk Cousins is back, of course. What do you think of Conklin and a Irv Smith fallout? Yeah, I would agree with that. And Irv Smith will be a guy that, you know, I think will go late in drafts. I don't know. Maybe he'll catch some hype as we, uh, you know, as we move toward draft season. But the, the pathway is more clear for him now than it was with only Johnny Munt there uh, to really, you know, give him any problems in terms of snaps. The Jets, you know, I think Conklin and C.J. Uzoma are probably going to cancel each other out. There's not a whole lot to get excited about there. That's more of a, a quality real-life pairing than, you know, anything that we're going to get excited about in fantasy. All right. Wrap it up here with a couple uh, somewhat, uh, I don't want to say meaningless, but very low profile tight end signings. Hayden Hurst, one year deal to the Bengals to replace CJ Zoma, Ricky Seals Jones to a Baron Giants tight end core. Any optimism for you at all with RSJ, who I probably lost more money on RSJ than anyone would care to admit <laughs> in my life? And then also Hayden Hurst to the Bengals. Um, I think Hayden Hurst is a little bit interesting to Cincinnati. Um, you know, it's, it'll be him and Drew Sample. Yeah. And then, 
yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, not su- I'm not super excited about either of these guys. I mean, we, we've, we've been through the, the trials and tribulations of RSJ. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's semi-interesting right now because th- just there's nobody else there really to give him problems in terms of snaps, but eventually they're, they're going to add someone. I mean, I, I, I would be surprised if they they're, – they're, they're a smart organization now, I think. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, but I, I, I like what they've done, you know, throughout free agency, rebuilding the offensive line. Joe Shane and uh, Brian Dable, really smart guys. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I don't think we're going to see a big year from RSJ. All right. Once we've hit RSJ, we know it is time to end this program. Appreciate you all being here. We don't normally record on Sundays. Of course, we wanted to have for this, this for you guys for the Monday morning commute because so much went on since we last recorded on Friday. Wherever you're listening, YouTube, iTunes, wherever else, hit the subscribe button. It is indeed free. We'll be back later this week with more podcasts and free content for you. For Producer Luke, for Evan. I am Adam. Good luck, everybody.